Hey everyone, Sir Termon here again. And today I'm bringing you some more standard gameplay. And this that we're playing Echo Cats. Now, this list we stole from a player that we went against a few days ago. You might have seen that video and seen that matchup, Cole Hugnan. And Hugnan was do, uh, running this interesting this mono echo list that just was trying to copy the cats and then play Pack Attack which was a new card that was introduced with the mini expansion a week ago where you get to summon an ephemeral copy of all your cat allies. The reason that this deck works is because the combination of pack attack with cunning kitten means that every ephemeral copy of the cunning kitten is going to be like at least a 4-4 and it's going to draw you a card, which ends up working out really well. This deck has a lot of cool combos if you're able to pull it off. So let's jump into the games and see if we actually pull up the combos. And remember, if you like our account, make sure to like video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. And I'll see you at the end of the video where we do an in-depth breakdown and mulligan tips. Enjoy. In this match, we're going to get Shan Jarvan. The denies are really annoying, right? It means that our... Hmm... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this acorn and just hope that we get the pack attack. We don't get it, but at least we get a unit. We get the imperfectionist, which is great. So we get acorn here, get the time trick down to one. Doesn't doesn't hurt. Then we get acorn again and ancient prep. If we get the pack attack, we could get this pack attack pretty low, which could be a surprise attack into the opponent. So let's go ancient prep first. That's the pack attack. Then let's go second acorn. And then we'll play Chronomancer. Or we can even go time trick and then Chronomancer. I think we do both because I wanna have the kittens, right? I think we do both because I wanna have I wanna have the kitten in my hand for the evil imperfectionist next time. So here we think I think we skip. We don't get the kitten, and then we get Chronomancer. Hopefully we get a kitten this time. We still don't get the kitten. Let's look for another look predict ahead. then. We know how to prepare. We pass. We have plenty of blockers. The opponent has a blocker for for the it has uh, acorn now, but we we they did their job right. They did their job. Did what they needed to do. We'll block here. We we'll play clock lane, and again, hopefully we get the kittens. No kittens yet. <laughs> oh. We got the kittens. We got the kittens and the imperfectionist combo. Now we're talking. So let's just open attack first. Let the opponent block an acorn if they want to. Just get this down to three. And they will start putting the kittens on the field or on, the, on our deck. And then go perfectionist next thing, right? So we'll go here. Perfectionist next turn. Get more kittens, hopefully. So hopefully you get more kittens here. Okay, well that was not the one that one's not one of the ones that we copy. The opponent has Jarvan, so they're gonna level up Jarvan here. That one is not one of the ones that we copy, fortunately for us. So we could technically go here first. Another pack. Ah, second pack is a little bit too crazy. Especially since it's gonna get duplicated. So I think we actually supposed to pass here. And just play one of these kittens out. Maybe I'm even supposed to play both kittens out. Mm, good thing I didn't. I think it's correct to go like this. Now, the opponent has the level of Jarvan, so that's going to be a lot of value. And I don't have any more draws until I start drawing the kittens that I've been copying. So I need to have more draw to make this this all these kittens in my deck actually do anything. Fortunately for us, the opponent is not going after the kittens. All right? So opponent's not going after the kittens like they're supposed to. If you want to block the badger bear here, that's fine. Form up, alright. I 
and then to keep the drop border in my hand Ah, Echo? Okay, Echo's good. Echo's good. Opponent has no concerted strike, right? So Echo's really good. He's gonna give me a sun draw regardless. Okay, okay. This this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> Let's go Echo right now. And at least we'll get a chrono break potentially to bring back all our units. So at least we have the corner break, because no matter what, I guess opponent can challenge here. But we'll at least get the corner break in the deck and then have time trick to try to draw into it. So again, I'm, I'm okay with this. The funny thing is that now, if I get another echo, I'm also down to just play the second echo out. So I'm also down to play the second Echo out, but we get the Colonel Break just like we needed to. So I'll develop this cat here. Because if the opponent actually kills these cats... And I can actually go Pack Attack right now. If the opponent kills these cats, I can bring them back with Colonel Break. While also getting a ton of draw. Okay. So we get there, right? So we can go Chrono Break, bring everything back. Which I will now. So that I can get the second Chrono Break again. Uh, I can get the second Time Trick, right? So this allows me to get the second Time Trick. Opponent decides not to attack into us. So this gets blocked. And then to just go like this. And then to just go like this, opponent has no good block for it. And just predict now. Potentially get another Chrono Break. No, but I'll, I'll take the Kitten. I took the ki I'll take the Kitten. Because this is what we're looking for, right? All of these are created by the evil imperfectionist. Opponent still doesn't attack again. Now we have Rhino Negation backing us up. We'll leave the Kittens on the field so that we have the pack attack. And we can beat a deny. So we can actually beat a deny because we have our own deny. Moral support, all right. We're just looking for the cats now, I think. I think we're in a position now where if we have multiple cats on the field, we just win. We don't even need the corner break. Maybe a second pack attack, but this pack attack is going to be enough for us to get there. Okay, yeah, so this is... This should be enough. We even got the corner break. Okay, so I'm going to go here first. I'm going to go corner break. Then I'm going to go kitten. Then I'm going to go pack attack. That's going to summon multiple kittens that the opponent is going to have to block. I guess one of them gets blocked by the Shen. We also get a bunch of draw here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. There is no dispute. You have to block. You're going to go down to one, okay. I know, you're going you're gonna to give me the block. So let's go evil imperfection. Remember, we still have this corner break, right? So we, we we can attack again whenever we want to. Maybe at this point we copy the corner break. Have it cost two less. We go kitten one more time. Draw more. Go corner break. We lose the echo. But we get to just attack with the cats. So the corner break actually here doesn't do much for us, right? Because opponent has good blockers. So maybe it was correct not to do anything there. We could just pass and then do the corner break next turn. So actually I almost threw it. The opponent doesn't surrender there. That was a bad play. We just have multiple cats on the field like how we did. And then we try just pass. We try just pass. Maybe play the uh, maybe play the Chronomancer since we have five mana. We play the Chronomancer and then we just pass. 
Next turn, when the opponent attacks into us, we block with all the cats. We go corner break, revive them all, get a bunch of draw, and attack again. So slight misplay on my part there, doing the corner break at the end when I wasn't going to summon anything. You want to use the corner break to summon stuff into your field. So GG's, but you get to see there the cats actually getting a lot of value out of us. So GG's. In this match, we're going to gain Bane, Aatrox, and Queen. So if, our, if we can get our cats to be really big, that could actually be a big deal. This acorn is so good. Hmm. I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I get the pack attack. We don't get the pack attack, but I don't mind having a three mana run negate run negation, right? So I wanted to skip and see if I could get the pack attack so that I can start reducing that with Acorn right away. Uh but three mana run negation is not not great, but also not bad. So we'll take this, we'll go Chronomancer next turn. This gives me two predicts. Potentially, whatever we get from here, probably better if it's a predict. We don't get the kittens or the pack attack. We do get echo. Uh, the echo is vulnerable to the fish fight, right? Because opponent can strike it. We let that go. Opponent played around the corner master correctly. The perfectionist. Not bad, I guess. Let's 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 pick the perfectionist. Because he could let me... It's, it's another predict, right? So it, it gets me another predict. And I don't hate having another predict available for us. So we're going to have double three mana run negation. So this gets me a predict and lets me create three copies. And if I, if I create the copies of the cats, I guess I should be okay. Ah, uh, okay. The pack attack, a little bit weird. I kind of don't want to copy any of this <laughs> now. I kind of want to predict into the pack attack. Well, I guess we're going to have to just wait then, right? Soon, I think it's better for us to skip there. I was hoping I could get the kittens. I was hoping I could get the kittens. If a opponent gets the Dark King Harp here, that could be a problem. Because he's going to be allowed into trade. So the Dunking Harp is kind of annoying. If it's just this, I think I'm fine with this. We'll go ahead and play the Clockling. That's our Kitten. So that's our Kitten. 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 I need to... I want to see... I want to check something out real quick. I want to see Echoes at 3. So this will take into 3. If we go Time Trick or Ancient Prep, we can actually level up Echo. So it might actually be better for me to go Ancient Prep, just so that we level up the Echo here. So probably correct for us to level up Echo. I'm okay picking a second Echo, because this first Echo could potentially die. If the opponent doesn't have an equipment here, we're okay, because the Fish Fight will allow, them, will allow the Echo to strike. I guess opponent could technically have Catch into Fish Fight. And if they have exactly that, I kind of kind of get a little bit screwed. Just just pull just pull, man. <laughs> just literally pull anything here. I gotta block this one in such a way that it's down to at least two HP. Or I mean, I guess three is fine too. But so three. That way we beat a catch. The opponent doesn't want to attack with this one because we still have a good blocker here. I guess let's go like this for now. The losers are not doing anything versus the bad giver anyways. We'll play the Echo. We'll have the double run negation. We start getting our predicts from the Echo. This ends up being more of an Echo game rather than a cat game. Again, even if the opponent has the fish fight, it has to be a strike. It's going gonna, it's gonna to allow me to at least get some value from the Echo. And because we have a second Echo in our hand, I don't mind throwing this first Echo away. And opponent hasn't seen a single equipment yet. So the fact that we didn't see the Valor plus Darking Harp bodes really well for us. 
Again, if they have the fish fry, because they haven't done any equipment, we still get the value from Echo allowing us to draw. Yep, there you go. So we lose the Echo, but we at least get to draw. And we have a second Echo plus the Rider Negation as a backup. We get the pack attacks, but we're still not getting our cats. I think at this point I will pick at least one pack attack. Because I think that is how we win the game. Eventually. We have blockers for the... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, well, two of them is not great. Two of them is not great. Hmm. Let's go another echo. We can beat another strike because now we have three mana of negation. negations. Opponent doesn't know that. All right, we have plenty of blockers for that, so that's okay. So we have plenty of blockers for this uh, defector. So I'm okay with the opponent not putting that anywhere else. If you if he gives me that, I will have Acre on the field next time. Okay, so this is going to be a catch then. So the opponent has a catch that I need to watch out for. Not a catch. Okay, not, not going to give me the A kill, the baggy bear. Properly playing around the acorn, right? I'm going to block. He sucks blocking, losing these blockers with uh, having the corner break. But I think it's important for me to not take that much damage just yet. Okay, so now we just do Rattle Negation and go here. If you have another Condemn, you have another Condemn. Doesn't have it. We deny the attack. Another Fish Fight is a problem. So Fish Fight, Condemn, doesn't have either. So we'll go here. Go with the Echo first. Let's go with the Echo first. You're gonna give me the Elusive Blocker. So I'm okay with this, right? I mean, if we get a Chrono Break from this, we're putting spending their single combat. If I deny this... If I deny this, I guess I'm also fine. If, if I deny this, it's probably better. We have two Predicts to find the Chrono Break. So we have two predicts to find the chrono break. So I actually don't think that denying that is correct. We have two predicts to find the chrono break. So we whiff the first one. But we get echo. And the second one, we just get quick sense. Ah, okay. Um Let's go Chronomancer then. Let's have a blocker as well as the a Acorn. That's the Chrono Break. It's not doing much for me next turn. I guess we could use it. We could use it to bring back our units. So we could use it. We're going to have eight, three, six. Maybe we keep the Rana Negation. So we have enough for Echo, Rana Negation plus Chrono Break. So we can block this one. So we can block this one here. Take the four, play the echo, sacrifice the echo, and still have corner break available for us. Plus rider right negation backup. I need my cats. Like I predicted so much and I haven't seen the cats yet. Perfect. And opponent's even giving it to us, right? So we go here, here, get the get the uh get the predict and then go for the chrono break. Don't touch it. And get to attack again and get all my units back. So I get to attack again and get all my units back while having Rider Negation as a backup, and I think that's kinda cool. Let's show the opponent that we had a chrono break even before the predict. Where are my cat at? Where are my cat at? 
This is so frustrating. All coming back to me now. This is actually so frustrating. We still have Rata Negation for three, right? So I don't want to tap out of the three mana. Uh, the opponent's just gonna get their equipment back, right? So the opponent's looking to just have the Dark in the Staratu. So the opponent's looking to have his Staratu because they need the draw. It's also a blocker into the Echo. So that's great for them. Another Chrono Break already. Sure. You know, deja vu isn't what it used to be. So we get a, they get another we get another Chrono Break. We have Rata Negation still. Okay, so that allows me to play this Acorn here. Now, the opponent is going to be able to kill my Echo with this Taratu, but that's fine because we know that we have the Chrono Break available for us. Uh, Chrono Break is 3, 6. I think it's better to just play. Doesn't matter. We're not going to draw it, right? Because we got to predict. It's better to just play my cards out and just push damage with everything because we know that we'll revive everything again and have Rata Negation and we have the Chrono Break already in our hand. So even if they block with this Taratu to kill the Echo, we just Chrono Break. And this 3 mana Rata Negation completely saves us. I think it's correct for them to... I mean, they're, they're losing to the Chrono Break. We never got the cats. We never got the cats. But they're still losing to the Chrono Break regardless. So here we go. This is 3 damage. Plus all my units that are coming back. Even if they have a Strike or a Cataclysm, the Rata Negation stops it. So whatever it is that the opponent is holding on to shouldn't be enough. I guess if they have another blocker, if they have another blocker, they do get to uh, survive. So maybe it was correct for me to predict first. So probably it was correct for me to predict first, see if we got a stronger unit than the drop border. Yeah, you have to, you have to sacrifice it because you, you know, we, we have the blockers, right? So probably was correct for me to predict first. And see if we get something bigger than the draw opponent. Like even if we get the cat, that would have been lethal. Because now the opponent we we do give the opponent an out, right? We give the opponent an out right here. Yeah, we're giving them a lot of outs here. Let's skip. We have one more corner break. Okay, the quicksand helps us. We get the kittens finally. Before we go for the kitten, let's go ahead and predict one more time. I I'm just trolling at this point if I do this, right? That's fine. I, 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 I mean, I messed up again. I messed up. I could have actually had lethal last turn. So that's on me. Opponent's going to get a lot of draw here. Right? So the opponent's going to get a lot of draw here. We can just block, play the cat, start setting up for our pack attacks. They get eight trots. Unfortunately, they cannot play the eight trots. So now what we can actually do here is just quicksand here and here. That way we can kill this Taratu. So we are able to kill this Taratu now. I'm just gonna pass. Opponent doesn't have Challenger, and if the opponent attacks with this Taratu, we're trading with it. So I just pass here. Because we have Lethal on the open. And if the opponent gets me this Taratu, I'm cool with this. I'm down to take the seven from Solani. And that's game, yeah. So, unfortunately, I mean, you know, I messed up a little bit. We also didn't get the cats so we needed into, but we still got there. We still got to do predict stuff with Echo and win the game, so GDS. In this match, we're gonna against Fizz and Seraphim. So I'm guessing it's a Dark Alibar type of deck, right? Uh, we have the pack attack. 
but it might be too early for the pack attack. I think I want to look for the... I want to look for the cats first, right? I want to look for the evil imperfectionist into the kittens first. And just have more predicts in my hand. Light negation is going to be really good, right? Especially once the opponent has a level of seraphim. I think we skip here. Again, we're looking for the kittens. And the evil imperfectionist to copy said kittens, right? We get we get the kittens now, so now we're looking for the evil imperfectionist. Uh, we don't get it, but this clock lane... I guess we already have a clock lane, right? We already have a clock lane, so I think, I'm, I'm, I think I have to be okay skipping there. We do already have one clock lane, so I'll be okay skipping there. If we get the evil K, we have multiple predicts to get to her. That's the best thing that we can do. Because we can play the evil K on turn 4 and save our clock lane for later. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Wonder what you pick. Oh, this this she is. Okay, perfect. So we have our evil K. So we're gonna start having our cat printer. Let's go. We'll save this second predict for later. Uh when it probably has to like, make it rain or something. Right? Do I wanna so this is my problem with this deck is that it's more likely than not that this is gonna be a freaking mischievous Marai deck, right? So it's just gonna I mean, I guess you go for the warning shot now So maybe if you don't get the second warning shot with the mischievous Marai, I think I'm fine Swindle, okay, well, that's gonna be bad Swindle is bad depending on what the opponent picks so I have to assume, yeah, it doesn't matter. If you saw my cards, you saw my cards. I'm just going to play the evil K right now. The fist damage is adding up, which is going to make the mischievous Marai really problematic. I need to play this clock lane as a blocker sooner rather than later. We have the cadence and we have the pack attack. So if we get at least a couple, if we get at least three cadence in the field, I think we actually can win with the pack attack if we get echo chrono break will also be really nice so let's look for echo as well opponent want to play probably wants to play one spell here first yeah, there you go yeah opponent wants to play a spell out so that we can level up the fist and push even more damage so there's two options either we get the did we get the kid in here we don't get it come on I actually gonna keep the quicksand, I think. I don't like it, but I think the quicksand is gonna be important against this fist. We can predict next turn if necessary to look for draw. Yeah, but he's gonna try to kill this clock lane. Harley. Okay, those two. We, we can still kill the fist, right? Because of the quicksand. So I, I think I'm fine with that. And then we can push four, six, eight damage. So we can push eight damage. If one has Seraphine already leveled up, we can push eight damage. When it gets Gaddy touch as well. Mischievous Mirai, right? Into a second warning shot will be a problem. If we get Echo here, I think I'm down to play the Echo. That's not an Echo. But honestly, the Parlor Convergence is also not bad. as a nice predict target, but I think I gotta skip. I think I gotta skip and just get my cats. We do get the cat, but not the right one, right? Not the cat that lets us draw. But what we can do is play cat. Oh, he copied our even Perfectionist. Right. So we go here, Chronomancer. Another Clockland? Sure. Ahead, we, know how to we can go Cat, Cat. Start setting up for the uh, Pack Attack. I don't hate it, I guess. One is going to have blockers, though. Yeah, this is going to be good, because that gives him multiple blockers. Ah. Uh... 
like I could go pack attack right now. Opponent tapped out of answers to kill my cats. I think I'm actually gonna go pack attack right now. Just get the double cat on the field. If the opponent trades with me here, that's even better. Like, if the opponent trades like this with me, that's even better. Like, I'm down to trade this evil imperfectionist. But it has three spells that cost zero. Momentous choice was one of them, okay. Wait, that's actually in the pool now for that. Wow, that's actually kind of funny. Because it's two mana. Transfusion lets them kill here. Like, opponent's not going to have answers for these cats. And we just need to get more cats after. Okay, opponent has one card that I haven't played yet. This is pushing A and giving me double the draw, and opponent is forced to block. Echo and Cold Shot. Both are pretty good. I'm gonna open next turn though, just because we have Rider Negation, right? So because we have Rider Negation, it's correct to open. Yeah, you wanna block here? Oh, we're gonna have. Oh, uh, well, we don't have Lethal on the open. So maybe it is Echo, because we don't have Lethal on the open. So since we don't have Lethal on the open and we didn't get another pack attack, it's gonna be Echo. Into Rider Negation to protect the Echo if necessary. But I'm still putting myself in a position where I'm losing to the BB into Warning Shot if the opponent gets BB and Samira on the field at the same time. They need to kill this Echo though. They need to kill this Echo though. Just a little bit unfortunate that we didn't get... Okay, so the opponent must not have the... Opponent just lost there, right? Opponent must not have anything. Yeah, opponent just lost here. Like, if they had the BB, they could have done core into Magical Journey, so I'm guessing they don't have it. A little bit unfortunate, right? We got to see the pack attack, but we end up not drawing anything from the pack. Like, we end up not drawing the cats, right? Alright. We don't have lethal, chat. We don't have lethal. We, we, we don't have lethal. We're gonna predict into another pack. I wanted to predict into another cat pack attack. <laughs> ah, I just wanted to I just wanted to style, but the opponent just said whatever, so GG's. <laughs> In this matchup, we're gonna get Lurk. Hmm. Lurk players, huh? We got the evil imperfectionist. We have the echo. We have the acorn. I like the preparations. I like the ancient... Oh, wow. We got the... Okay, so we got the pack attack right away. I like the ancient prep because it's going to do this, right? It's going to give me a bunch of blockers. We don't need to predict into the pack anymore because now we already have it. So now we can just go acorn. And now we're just looking for the cats. This is going to be a good blocker for next turn. If the opponent has the snap jaw, they get value here, but it's not going to be enough. Okay, they get to kill this guy. Still gets me some value here, at least. We need a three... We need a three cost card here. Quick sand. It's gonna be good for later. Um there's two options. We can go echo or we can just go clockwing first. I don't hit the echo. I don't hit the echo, because I don't think upon I guess opponent could have access to like if the opponent has access to to Pike, they just kill the Echo here. And I'm, I'm kind of sad if they do that. Let's go Clockling. Let's go Clockling. I, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the Echo just that freely. The problem is that we don't really have anything that we want to like. Like, I think I have to go for the Ancient Prep. Because I need to get the cats. I need to get the cats to get my printer going. So that came from the left. So the opponent had a search site calling. That's the cat. So now with the cat and the imperfectionist, we can get the cat printer going. Echo's one away from leveling up. 
So we'll have the cat printer going. We'll have multiple blockers. We just need to survive their aggression and hope that their Rex doesn't come anytime soon. Opponent just predicted something here, but they don't have the attack token. We have the quicksand for the overwhelms later. Uh, let's go Evil Imperfectionist twice. Okay, so this could be a Rexa, I guess, or the Pike. Oh, the pack is just going to come right now. Okay. So if that's not a wreck side, you're just losing your pike here anyways. If that's not exactly a wreck side on the top, you're losing your pike here. If it's a wreck side, do I ever just kill this pike now? Hmm. If that's a Rex, I block here with this, block here with a 2 2, block the Pike with the Evil Imperfectionist. Okay, well, if the opponent challenges anyways, I'm killing it, right? Oh, opponent went the other way. So, opponent played around the quicksand. So, what that tells me is that opponent played around the quicksand, and I think I'm, I'll, I'll take that then. So, I'll, I'll take the trade here and just pick the 5 damage. That's one less Ruthless Predator to level up your uh, your Rexa later. We're going to go like this. And then predict with the Chronomancer. We could have predicted with the Echo. Like we could have predicted and then play the Echo instead. But I don't hate doing this. Now, the problem here is this pipe, right? We don't get the cats. How are we not getting these cats? Like, how are we not getting these cats? That's actually crazy. With the power of Kaya, the possibilities that's are actually endless. crazy. They actually have a second Pike. Okay, so that's a problem. Pike is gonna level up here. The opponent using that now though, and not later when the Rex side, when the when the Echo's on the field is good for us. So then doing that that now and not later is great for us, right? Because that means that that's two Pikes now. We could let go, knowing that we have the quicksand. And we can... The problem is that we cannot kill both pikes, right? So we cannot kill both pikes because opponent is going to be able to drag one of the pikes with the clock knife. Oh, okay. Well, I don't have to worry about pike anymore, right? I don't have to worry about pike anymore. Uh, we can go here... Here, here, and just go like this. And the opponent better pray that I don't get a corner break. Now the opponent has to pray that I don't get a corner break, right? Now this opponent find the rack side, so that is scary. The other option is for us to just start going for the cats. We could start going for the cats. We need the five mana anyways. So we could go cat here. Second cat here. Start going for the pack. Pack attack. And corner break. Wait. This just wins the game then, right? We go pack attack here. Get double the draw. These two units kind of like they died. We play a corner break to bring them back, and we're chilling. So I think we just won. Opponent, yeah. <laughs> Opponent didn't let us see it, but we just won there. Because, I mean, we just pack attack. We get two cats that are going to be six attack units. We have the corner break in hand, and those two cats that are ephemeral get revived by the corner break. So even if the opponent had a way to have enough blockers, they just lost right there. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Jason Heimer. Opponent has quite a bit of removal, which is a little bit annoying in this matchup for us. We have a lot of predict power. We keep the time trick, I guess. At least have one target for the acorn. 
And I think that's reasonable, having at least one target for Acorn. Just in case that we don't... Because if we don't top deck the, the uh, Pad Attack, it's fine. Or at least eat up the Quietus here. Hmm. Okay, opponent does neither. Let's go here with the Time Trick. Cornomancer. There's the Pack Attack. In this timeline... We're sure to save we need the cats, right? So we need the cats with the perfectionist. Or with another predict. Opponent has access to heads uh to the sits. Oh, okay, so it's gonna be a formula. Let's go in let's go practical perfectionist right away. I have to skip, right? I have to skip. I don't wanna copy any of those. I don't want to copy any though, so I think the skip is correct. I can open attack here at least and just get a bunch of damage. We don't have the cats yet, which really sucks. Okay. Uh, let's go ancient prep first. We get the evil imperfectionist. Rider negation though might actually be better. So I need this so that I can start copying stuff. I need the evil imperfectionist so I can start copying stuff. So we can pass time trick, clock win. One can challenge. The right negation was my assurance for me to just not straight up die. Okay. We got time trick. We get the echo at least. Echo is level dub now. So, I mean, we could just straight up play the echo. We could just straight up play the echo, I guess. Um, do it now while the opponent only has three mana so that I can just open attack and play around a shot last next turn. Opponent's gonna have to have the vengeance. What'd you do this time? But this allows me to actually predict into the uh into the chrono break with the clock line, right? So it allows me to predict into the chrono break chrono break with the clock line. So I think I'm fine with this. Unless yeah, mystic shot, alright? So the opponent just wants to get blockers. I want to I want to predict into the corner break with this, if possible. We finally get the cat, right? The other option is that we actually start playing for our pack attack. Step aside. So, if the opponent doesn't kill Echo here, I think I actually play for the pack attack for the pack attack, right? Opponent actually doesn't kill the Echo. So I don't know that I need the corner break just yet. I think I can actually go evil imperfectionist. And I start looking for my cats. Hey Rosa, got some new tweaks to the power circuitry. Great, we're running into heat issues. What you got? Hmm. How crazy is that? I guess I guess we go here, right? I guess we always do it because we might we either hit the cat or we hit the corner break. So we either hit the cats or we hit the corner break. Okay. So we have access to the quicksand, so I'm not scared of the elusives. And the opponent is putting themselves in a position right now where if I do get the kernel break, I'm just getting free value with Echo. Okay. Now. If I attack, opponent has great blockers here, right? Opponent has good blockers no matter what I do. I think I still attack with everything, just make their blockers worse. Even if you get the good blocks here and here, you're still gonna take at least two damage. You still okay, okay, I was gonna say you have to you probably wanna block with this. Okay, maybe they're trying to commit lethal. So if they take this damage, they're trying to commit lethal. I'm okay clearing up my board here because I'm making space for the cats that I'm going to start drawing eventually. 
I haven't seen the cats though, and that's a problem. And we just used up the Chrono Break. They're not getting the mana out of this sh four sheath. So they only have seven. The quicksand stops the flow be gone from being a threat. No time like the present. Move it along, man. Pack attack is five. This pack attack, if I have at least two cats, I think this pack attack is going to be really good. But I need to have at least two cats because the opponent could respawn and kill my cat. Okay, so they're playing around the Mystic Shot, I guess. Alright, so they don't give me the flow be gone because they want to potentially have lethal. The problem is the quicksand just punishes that, and that's why quicksand is so good. Let me get the cats. That's the wrong cat. However, this corner break is way too good for us to pass up on, right? So we pick up the corner break. We'll play down this first cat that's not that's, that this that didn't get created at least. And we'll have the counter break as a rally, right? Because we can go clock lane and actually be able to have another cat that costs zero. I guess we want to have access to quicksand though. So we probably don't want to do this until the opponent goes for their... Because they're going to go for the acceleration gate, I'm guessing. Oh, they're just going straight up for the shock blast. All right. So the opponent goes for the shock blast, getting themselves double, double of the uh, floor guns. So we can go acorn, right? We can go acorn here. Opponent will be able to uh, to kill the acorn. If the opponent doesn't attack here, are we okay with that? They want to pull here with the acorn? Yeah, they want to pull here with the acorn. So now we go like this. Now we quicksand this one and this one. We let our cat die. That way when we chrono break, we get another cat back. So now when we chrono break, we're getting the cat back into our hand. We're getting acorn. We're getting the imperfectionist. The cat lets me draw. So the card lets me draw and we have Echo on the field. Now I have to be careful here how I attack, right? Like this is just going to die into the Adaptron. So I don't know that I actually want to attack into it. At the same time, I do probably want to attack into everything, right? Like we probably just want to attack with everything. And go from there. So there we go. GG's. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's games. We got to pull off the cat combo a couple times. We never got to see it all the way through, right? Because opponents were just surrendering us. But you kind of get the idea of exactly what this combo wants to do. Now, as I was playing the deck more and more, I realized that you really have to kind of go in for the combo. And what I mean by that is that you're mulliganing for the combo pieces. And that's going to be cut, Cunning Kitten and Evil Imperfectionist. You want to have the Cunning Cannon, Kitten and the Evil Imperfectionist because you want to duplicate the Cutting Cannons that are in your hand so that you have more Kittens in your in your deck and you can start drawing into them and they're also cheaper when they're in your deck from the Evil Imperfectionist because they're going to cost one less. That way, when you actually set up for your big pack attack combo, you have at least two, three, or four cats in the field by being able to play all those copies that you got from the Evil Imperfectionist, right? So ideally, right, you want to get the Cunning Kitten, the Evil Imperfectionist, and once you play the Evil Imperfectionist to copy the Kitten, that's when you want to play the Practical Imperfectionist to copy those Kittens even more, and when you want to start predicting even more. Heck, we don't even care about sacrificing Echo a lot of times in this, in this matchup. If it means allowing us to have another predict and another draw, to get us to our main win condition of the kittens plus the pack attack. So, mulligan tips. Really, I don't hate mulliganing everything away except for the cutting kitten and the evil imperfectionist if you get it. Acorn is also good to keep as a runoff. Uh, so, Acorn is the other, other card that I will keep in my hand. I don't think you need to keep anything else, like even your Chronomancer, your Ancient Prep. You want to have those later in the game in case that you don't get your Cunning Kittens and your Imperfectionist, or once you already have your Cunning Kittens 
in your deck that are created by the evil professions then that's when you can actually go ahead and play those early cheaper predicts but in the early game acorn cunning kitten even in perfections the only time i will also keep the pack attack is if i have acorn in my hand at the same time right but you have to be careful because it can be really accurate if you have double pack attack in your hand but don't have any kittens to actually get value from that so even though the acorn reduced from the pack attack is nice in theory you gotta make sure that you don't tunnel vision too hard on it if your hand doesn't look good enough already as it is in terms of general strategy it goes hand in hand with the mulligan right so Early on, if I already have the Kitten and the Impressionist in my hand, I do want to play a couple of Predict cards to defend myself and also level up my Echo. So I will play the Chronomancer. I'll play the uh, the Ancient Preparations, right? Like those are okay to play early on so that you can slowly level up your Echo and try to get the Predicts in your... In, try to get the right cards in your hand, whether it's more Kittens or more Evil Imperfectionists, etc. Then on turn four, you want to play Evil Imperfectionist into the Cunning, cunning Kitten. That will add an additional four copies of the kittens in your deck that now cost one and count as created, which is the big part. Because those count as created, as you draw them, you can play them and they just replace themselves in your hand because they're going to draw you a card and they're going to come down as 4-4. Four, four. So that's the first thing. After turn four, that's when you start predicting into the rest of your combo pieces. So after you have at least four created copies of kittens in your deck, you can play the practical imperfections if you like to have a higher chance of getting the kittens you can play on mental clock lane you can play a second even imperfectionist you can start playing echo if it's already close enough to leveling up or you can start playing those kittens if you start drawing them so that you can actually have the kittens on the field to play the pack attack because the pack attack only does based on what's on the field so you gotta make sure that you at least have two kittens on the field for the pack attack to be worth it the Funny thing about Pack Attack as well, if you play whatever cutting kitten you got from the Evil Imperfectionist, it's going to come down as a 4-4, right? When you play Pack Attack on the 4-4 kitten, it actually becomes a 6-5 because he attacks an exact ephemeral copy, right? So that's the general strategy of how you want to do it with this deck, just Evil Imperfectionist, kittens, and then Pack Attack. The other side of things is if you have a leveled up Echo, then obviously you can start working on the Chrono Breaks instead. And you saw us winning a couple games where Chrono Breaks are just too good against the opponent. Obviously, you want to go Chrono Break into be able to recycle back your Cutting Kittens or your Echo. When you have Chrono Break and you also have Kittens on the field, don't be afraid of attacking with them. Because when you bring them back with Chrono Break, it means that they will come back as 4-4s four and they will give you a free draw, which is amazing. It's exactly what this deck is looking for. So that you kind of keep continuing having just all these units that the opponent will not actually be able to deal with. So that's the general strategy. You're either winning with the cats or you're winning with Echo Chrono Wake or kind of like a combination of both. Uh, and yeah, aside from that, everything else is kind of just helping you survive. You know, you have a lot of blockers. You have quicksand against like pesky illusive overwhelms. You have other negations, etc. Just survive until you can get that kitten printer online and going. So yeah. Anyways. I think that's going to be it for me today. Uh, we are, if you're watching this on Monday night, make sure that you tune in at 7 p.m. No, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time to Jason Sessional's Twitch channel, where we will actually be participating in LOR Jeopardy. So Legends of Winter Jeopardy, if you're not familiar with that, make sure you tune in at 8.30 to Jason Sessional's channel. But that be it for us today. Hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch September. We stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow.